if you've ever watched a Grantham video, got absolutely lost in his eyes and admired the amazing production quality that he does, and have just about realized that you're not going to get that same quality here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like and comment so we can get this page going so I can bring you more stuff. Um, today we're going to be doing a one day build. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, doing a rough camo paint job on a Safari Land holster. Um, something that I usually do every time I buy a holster um, because I don't like spending the extra 60 bucks to get it in the multicam. I figure I can save some money and do it myself. Uh, so that's coming up next, our first ever one day build. Alright guys, so I've already done a little bit of prep work. Yesterday I took my Safari Land holster and I did all the masking across the bottom of the holster and the top and I've painted it in a matte black to start with. And then we're going to go into some other colors from there, some greens and a lighter brown. And the stuff that we're going to be using to make the pattern is going to be old times favorite, a little bit of camo netting. Um, I have hundreds and hundreds of feet of this stuff. Um, and I have one little square piece, so I'm going to go ahead and cut um, a good chunk out of this and uh, lay it over the holster and spray a coat on. All right, so all I'm going to do here really is just lay the uh, oh, mesh over the holster. I'm using a Krylon Satin Hunter Green. They didn't have any flat. Um, I like to start with a darker color, and then I'll work my way up. Uh, so I'll do the brown next, and then a light green over that, and you'll see how it kind of comes through. So I'm going to do a nice light coat. Good. And then we'll take off the bits here. Get that kind of dry, and then we'll hit it with our with the hair dryer. And that just helps to dry the paint a little quicker. If you, if you don't have a hair dryer uh, in your shop and you do a lot of painting, get one. It saves time. Um, and for somebody who's uh, impatient like me, time is key. One spot uh, that you have to paint uh, that's hard to do. All I have this done, uh, the Safari Land holster comes with this little nub in the back here. Um, I don't even really know what it's for. Um, but I just jammed a, a drill bit into this 2x4 to use that. And you have to remember that you have to paint the back side of the holster, you know, this, this piece here. So. that a little heavier than I wanted but that's my fault Try to take that back off and hit that with it. I'll stick that back on the All right, so I, I wanted the tonality to be a little bit, if that's even a word, uh, to be a little different on this. So I got this um, burlap pattern at Walmart. It was really cheap. It was like two bucks. And I, I think what I'm, I've cut some little slots and holes in it and pulled it apart a little bit to make it a little bit more random. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay that, you know, over the holster like this. And then I'll hit it with the with the brown, uh, just so I don't get, and I want a different pattern breakup, kind of making something different here that um, not everybody has the same, you know, colored pattern holster or whatever. So we'll see how that works out. All right, so I'm gonna use this um, darker brown, well it's not a dark brown, it's more of a sandy color. Um, uh, camouflage Rosoleum Ultra Flat. And uh, see how 
It's not a bad color. And we're going to hit this just real light. And then see what that gives us. Oh yeah, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, I like that. It's not a super pronounced pattern. Um, that's good. The problem that I find with the Rust-Oleum is that it, it kind of goobers a little bit more than the other paints, like the Krylons. Um, they don't dauber as much when they come out of the... That is quite nice. <clears throat> it's more like a little speckled tiger effect. That's really nice. I like that. So we'll put the brown away. Hit that with our heat gun. Pretty dry. Flip it over. Do the back. See if I can get it. That's good. And that's uh, pretty much how we're going to go from here. I'm going to do, uh, now that I've done the brown, I'm going to do a coat of this uh, Italian olive uh, Krylon paint with the mesh again. And then I may do, uh, we're going to alternate the pattern so that one is a little bit different than the other. I'm going to hit it with this, and you guys are going to get to watch probably a little time lapse video. Alright guys, so the holster has gotten its last good coat of paint on it. I'm very happy with it. Um, it has a really nice uh, kind of scaly, browny, I, I just, I think it came out really good. Um, I, I think it looks, I did get one little scratch uh, right there. That's uh, my watch band actually hit that and scratched the paint, but I don't care. It's a holster. It's not uh, a showpiece, so I'm fine with that. So the next thing that we have to do is, um, while it's still a little tacky, put a coat of a flat uh, clear on it. All right, guys, so I don't really know what this clear coat is going to look like. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is do a little test on the backside, like where the, um, the holster hooks up to my uh, drop leg. It's always a good idea to test clear coats uh, to see what they look like. So I hit that. It's, uh, in the sunlight, it doesn't make it any shinier than the actual paint. So I think we're, we're good to go uh, on that. Guys, if you're painting uh, in the shops, especially when you're doing clear coats, if you have an exhaust fan, um, I highly recommend you put the exhaust fan on. Like that horrible noise you hear in the back, my 1955 Craftsman exhaust fan. I hate it, but... Keeps you from suffocating. So here we go. We'll put the screws back in because they're painted as well, even though we're never going to see them. <coughs> My little easy bake oven. Put it over the top of that. A couple pieces of tape to hold the back down. This is a really simple way to get paint to dry quickly. You want to just take a cardboard box. Sometimes the bigger the box, the better. Um, I just didn't happen to have a, a large cardboard box down here. All I have was uh, this guy. So cut a hole in the side so that the heat can uh, escape. I put some tape over it, just like you would on a forge or something to kind of maintain a good temperature. Take your hair dryer, cut a circle in the back, jam your hair dryer in. I like to put the hair dryer so that it's facing more like up, so it kind of 
wash this around and put it on low. And let that go for about 10-15 uh, minutes or so. Alright, so um, I've taken the masking off of the holster. Um, there's no paint on the inside, thankfully. Uh, everything looks really good. Um, always take your time when you're masking. Um, I hate it. Nobody hates masking more than I do. So take your time and do it right because you don't want a bunch of, you know, nasty paint on the inside of your holster. Um, I think it came out great. Um, I'm going to take some still photos of it and uh, <clears throat> put those along with while I'm talking here. Uh, looks very cool. Again, the paints that I used were the Rust-Oleum Camouflage 2X Ultra Cover um, in a tan, light tan sand color maybe. I used the Krylon Color Master Satin Hunter Green and the Krylon Color Master Satin Italian Olive. Um, I live in New England, so there's no need for me to be painting everything brown and deserty um, because that's not where I live. Um, and it's a good tip to remember when you are painting camouflage, go outside and look where you live. Or if you're in the military or you're a private contractor, where are you going to be going? Um, camouflaging is one of the simplest things to do. A lot of people get, you know, overworked and they do all this you know, crazy multicam stuff and um, simple tools like, you know, spray paint, uh, you know, camouflage tarping, and some burlap, and you can get a really nice broken up pattern that'll hide you uh, pretty well um, in the environment. So, not quite a full one day build today. It took about uh, two hours just to get to this um, stage, and um, so, that's it for now. Um, hopefully we'll be doing another one of these one day builds uh, in the very near future. Um, if you have any questions, please comment down below. If you have any criticism, comment down below. Um, or if you just want to ramble on about nothing, comment down below. Also be on the lookout for our target frames that will be coming out very shortly. Um, I've done the prototyping. Um, I'm just waiting on... Uh, doing a little bit more testing before I actually release them. There's a little bit of tweaking and stuff that I have to do. Um, so that's pretty much it, uh, it for today. So until next time. Okay, so I'm not quite done yet. Um, I mentioned before I live in Massachusetts. Um, and this is one of the most awkward states when it comes to, to gun laws and stuff like that. And uh, my... Big thumbs up to the people of California and the judge out there who just recently uh, overturned or denied the, the magazine capacity ban. I'm kind of hoping that we can maybe do the same thing here in Massachusetts. Um, it would be nice to have more than 10 rounds in a magazine, but um, so that's it. Bye.